them. I noticed they kept moving the little microphone or the volume. Can you hear me all right? That's fine. The, thank you. The little disturbance just a few moments ago was a uh, brother parked his car in the wrong place out here, and the people, I think, uh, want him to move it. That's what it was. And he, this one over here. How about me bringing this off? You can hear me all right. I, that's the, the Kentucky saying, we were barking up the wrong bush. <laughs> I was looking into this microphone, and this is supposed to be the one. That's fine. Thank you, Brother Gene. Now, today it's, we're happy to report of the meeting at, at Middletown, Ohio, last week, or week before last it is now. That was a glorious time for us. We had uh, all the congregations wasn't so big. but. It was out in the country at a place they call the Chautauqua, way out, eight or nine miles out of the city. But the, the seating was packed out and it held a few thousand people. I'm not very much on estimating crowds. And so uh, the main thing was Jesus met with us. And that's what the good part. And it brought great results to who... We give praise the Lord God for doing this for us. And there was some of the finest people that I ever met in my life uh, in that country. And uh, being that we're so close to the border here, I might say this. They were 99% Kentuckians. <laughs> Everything up there was Kentucky. Brother Sullivan said, Brother Branham, he said, um, do you know... You, all about all this little valley runs up through here is Kentucky. And I said, I, I didn't know that. He said, yes, they are. And one night in the meeting, I just happened to mention, how many is here from Kentucky? Raise up your hands. And I looked around, and I thought, is anybody from anywhere else? <laughs> this all straight Kentucky. And um, the results was marvelous. So many reports. There was a, a gentleman yesterday who was coming through, passed by and told me of some things that had taken place and letters coming in and different testimonies. And then there was there's a gentleman back here taking the recordings just now. And he said on a certain night, I believe he said the last night, one of us preaching on the little eagle. And he said that in the line of the discernments, uh, I may have been in the congregation, I wouldn't say just which. But there was a man who came up from the audience and the Holy Spirit began to talk to him and told him that he was not from that country, but he was from Indiana, some place up in Indiana, and said, you are not standing here for yourself. You're standing here for a little baby of yours, just a few months old, maybe three months. And something like that, and it was uh, going to be operated, and the heart had to be taken out, and it was such a, a pitiful condition. His little lungs had swollen up, his chest, his little stomach had dropped way in, and told him to go home, not to doubt, but if he wouldn't doubt, he'd find his baby all right. Now, the witness is just in the next room here now, and maybe the baby in the audience, for all I know. The little baby's lungs went down normal, and the little stomach came up normal. Amen. And the man who's taken the records in here of one of the tapes this morning brought the mother, the father, and his this tape recorder's neighbor and brought them in and brought the baby and set the baby across the room and played the tape. What was thus saith the Lord. Hallelujah. And he said that when they got to the spot where the gentleman came to uh, pre present himself at the platform, said the Holy Spirit came into the room for there sat the little baby right there cooing and playing and going on. Didn't need no operation. The doctors didn't have to operate. The Lord operated on the baby with his great, uh, great power. And the little baby sitting there 
playing on the little bed and, and the mother and father sitting there and the neighbor that might have been a little skeptic of the whole thing, there was the presence. If that isn't apostolic faith, Amen. I don't know what is. Praise the Lord. You know, the Bible said when Jesus said through the apostle Peter and John had healed the lame man at the gate, they could not say nothing against it because the man was standing there as a witness. Amen. So Christ still lives. Amen. Praise be to his name. Amen. What a comfort it is in these days. Now, that's just one of the many testimonies. But what it is in this day to find out that the same God with the same marvelous actions, the same things that he did, he does it just the same way today because he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We are grateful to have the privilege to be assembled this morning in his name. Now, pray for us as we journey from place to place to serve the Lord in the capacity that he will call us. And we're glad that there is not only from the tabernacle here, but from all around over the country. Amen. Thank you, sister. That was a loyal thing. I know that the great God of heaven seen you do the same thing. A lady quite a bit younger than another sitting here, a woman that has been on the field for the Lord years before I was born, her and her husband, fifty-some-odd years preaching the gospel, she working in a coal mine to support him on the field to preach the gospel I'm standing for. The elderly woman was sitting in front with no fan, wiping the perspiration from her face. A young woman gets up and comes and brings her her fan. So Amen. I tell you. I'm Amen. glad to be assembled this morning with people like that. <laughs> Makes me glad that I am a Christian and be assembled with Christian people. Now, it's very hot in our country and all over the country now, and we're looking forward to the coming of the autumn when it will be cooler. And our next big meeting that we know of is in San Jose, California. That's where we was on the fairgrounds for a few days, and there was such a gathering, we could nothing like take care of them. And the same groups are sponsoring the meetings coming now at the fairgrounds at San Jose. And we are trusting that if you live near there, our friends, write and tell them to be at the meeting, if not be praying for us. Now, today, I mentioned that I was to be here this morning to join in prayers and in supplications to the Lord with all you peoples. Amen. And if there is strangers in our midst, we're sorry that our building is not air-conditioned, but we are just a poor church and the goods of the world, but rich in the faith in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And we welcome you for this short visit. Pray that you'll come back and be with us again. Amen. Someday we hope to have a better church. We're not very much on church buildings in these days because we truly believe with all our heart the Lord Jesus is coming soon. And when missionaries are on the field preaching the gospel with no shoes on, Eating one meal a day, how can we build a million-dollar church in the face of that? I, I just can't sit and then say, the Lord's coming soon. Let's get into the field and do what we can. And this generation, if there is another, let, they'll answer for theirs. We'll have to answer for this one. I just can't go those million-dollar buildings and so forth after being on the field and seeing. Now, it's nice. To, I think the house of the Lord should be nice. And it should be a, a sacred little spot. Make it as comfortable and nice as possible, but not anything to extremes, because we don't understand that. Now, before we pray and read the Scriptures, I wanted to give a, not preach this morning, but give a lecture on the Scriptures. 
And usually coming, I only do this in my own church. And we are in our church. We're not a denomination. We are interdenominational by nature and are not a, affiliated with any churches in the lines of denomination, but are associated with all believers of all denominations and all peoples throughout all the world. Our little church this morning is known all over the world. The tapes that you, these messages, just as chopped up as they are, yet we are supporting on mission fields. How many different foreign nations? Nineteen foreign nations just on tapes alone. Nineteen different nations are taking the messages and translating them. Amen. Someone is on preaching, someone stand there preaching right with it. And they're going into the huts and the places out where God's not even known and preaching to the heathen and to the uh, natives of Africa and South America and all around the world. And hundreds times hundreds are coming to the Lord. Many are being healed. Amen. And that's the reason that we feel that it is all important to press the message, Amen. not in big buildings and so forth. Amen. And then when I'm here, I just have lectures on the Scripture. But out in the field, I don't preach any church doctrines because doing so it makes it hard. The peoples will say, my doctrine is not right, or something like that. And if you preach one, if I preach the Methodist doctrine, the Baptists will disagree with me. If I preach the Baptist, then the Lutheran will disagree. If I preach the Pentecostal, then the Nazarenes will disagree. If I preach the Nazarene, then the Church of God will disagree. So you see, you have to take a stand for something, but in the scope of the field of service, we just welcome every believer, Amen. no matter what your creed or denomination is, as long as you're born again of the Spirit of God, you are our brother and sister. Amen. And we intend to always keep it thus. And then... If the Lord willing, today I want to preach in our church, our church stand on Bible doctrine, what the church stands for, and why we do this. And doing so, we are bound to create our we do not mean to, but we might create questions in someone's mind. Say, well, I never was taught to such or to believe it in such and such a way. Thank you. And if it so happens that you, your church, doesn't believe or you do not believe just the things that we speak of as our church doctrine, we trust that it will by no means bring an offense. Because the very first step to successful Christianity and to show that man has received the Holy Spirit is humility, Amen. real God-given humility. That it must be given humbly. But yet a church without a doctrine is just like a jellyfish. It has no backbone. Amen. So we've got to have backbone in it and not also backbone, but teeth also because the church of God must eat the bread of life. Amen. And we, in some of the statements that I might make, if I try to drive it down hard. Now, please do not misunderstand it. 
that I'm not meaning to be rude on lecturing on the Bible, but if I, through 30 years of search, taking no creeds or nothing but just the Word, there's people here that's Presbyterian, Catholic, Baptist, Pentecostal, Nazarene, Church of God, Pilgrim Holiness. They're all sitting here. And I know that each church has its own creed. And I do not want to interrupt that, but I'm only trying to bring out the Scripture and make it with the Scripture. So then all, all will understand that it isn't to be rude, it's just to be with love and affections and with mercy and with the best that I know how to explain the Scriptures. And now, the subject this morning is going to be a kind of a long subject. And I do not wish to hurry. I want to take my time for just what I'm going to say and try to explain it why that we say it. So many times in the meetings, someone will say, well, what does he believe? Is he a Baptist yet? Is he a Pentecostal? Does he believe in speaking with tongues or is he this or that? Is he an eternal securitist? Or what is he? And then you just make one mention of anything that you are, they'll drop like hot potatoes. <laughs> no matter, they won't stop to listen, to take consideration, but they'll drop you right quick. Nowhere in my meetings at any time have I ever known of leaving discord among brethren. I always just preach the coming of the Lord, salvation, and, and divine healing. That doesn't hurt any full gospel person. Amen. Then, in the church here, I have our own doctrine. It leaks out amongst people who comes and says, Well, I, Brother Bram said so and so. Those things. Well, uh, we've got to have a doctrine. Now, just recently at a meeting, when someone asked a group of ministers, my secretaries and them are present, many, many letters come in and said, does Brother Branham believe in the uh, preserving or keeping the security of the believer? Well, I know in a legalistic group that was asking that, it would be hard for me to say it, they'd hands off right quick. And that doesn't make a bit of difference whether you believe that or not. As long as you're saved, that's the main thing. And uh, I didn't say nothing, and 16 different churches dropped out of sponsorship. You see them? Because that I refused to answer on account of keeping fellowship with the peoples. Now, in the church this morning, I want to explain why I believe what I believe. Let us pray. Lord, who brought again Jesus from the dead and has given him to us as a sacrifice of your love to us, and by the washing of the water by the word, he has sanctified a peculiar people, a called out group, and we are waiting patiently for his second coming. And we know that in the eyes of the peoples there are many creeds and denominations, and Father God, we would pray amen. that you'd bless each and every one of them, yes, amen. and the stand that they stand for, oh, though we might disagree with them in many things, yet in principle, amen. as Christians and as brethren, we stand shoulder to shoulder with them. And not only shoulder to shoulder, but heart to heart in a day of indifference when men are heady and high-minded, lovers of the pleasures of the world more than of God. We pray, O oh God, that the Holy Spirit will bind our hearts closer together all day by day. Heal the sick this morning, Lord. There are those that are to 
enter into baptism of water, and we pray that your Holy Spirit will fill them with the, His presence. If they haven't already received such, may they become sealed away from the things of the world and fill with the Spirit of God and divine love of God and with fellowship with all men. Lord, down across the nations of the world as you have sent me a poor, illiterate man. And yet, Lord, believing in my heart of thee the things that I have believed and have been taught by the Bible and confirmed by the angel of the Lord who stands present to confirm what's said, if it be of God. Many times people have thought me to be a compromiser. Thou art the judge of my heart. But as Paul of old, who even preached Judaism until he won the confidence of the people and then preached Christ crucified, but first to win the confidence of the people so his message would be seasoned with salt. We pray, O Lord, that you'll season our talks and our fellowship with the salt of the Spirit, Amen. with the blood of the Lord Jesus, and make us the people that has been called, and that the world might look and watch our lives and then become thirsty to be like us. Amen. Keep us humble and fill with thy love and thy Spirit. For we ask it in the name of him who prayed that we might be one, that all men would know that we were his children when we have love one for the other. Amen. Now, to you, I know it's kind of warm, and if there's, there's a foot fan back here, but they want to bring it anywhere, it would seem better. It's all right. I would just like to read some now from the sacred writings. No, sir, not as long as it's on the floor like that. I believe it'd be all right, Brother Neville. <clears throat> I want you to turn with me in the Scriptures to the book of Joel. And then I have several places here that I'd like to read from first to get a lecture, some context for a lecture. First, in Joel, the first chapter beginning with the first verse and reading the fourth, and then in the second chapter, the 25th to the 27th, we'll read for a scripture reading. And the word of the Lord came unto Joel, the son of Pethuel. Hear this, ye old man, and give ear. All the inhabitants of the land has this been in your days, or even in the days of your fathers? Tell ye your children of it, and let your children tell their children, and their children another generation. That which the palmer worm left hath the locust eaten, and that which the locust has left has the canker worm eaten, and that which the canker worm has left has the caterpillar eaten. And then in the 25th to the 27th verse of the second chapter, I will restore unto you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar, the palmer worm and caterpillar, the great army which I sent among you. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. Then in the book of Romans, and in the First chapter of Romans and the 25th verse. I'll read this. We'll take the 24th also. 
Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Who changed the truth of God unto a lie. And then in Romans, the third chapter and the fourth verse, Romans third and the fourth verse we read, the first phase of that fourth verse, God forbid, let God be true and ever man a liar. Now, we are coming into a serious thought of subjects here. And now, we, I believe that there will come a time of the restoring of all things that has been done wrong. And we are trying with all that is within us, and other men are trying such great advances as Billy Grimm and Old Roberts and many other of the outstanding dancers, ministers, pastors who are loyal to their post, are trying to see a revival in our time. And you, the children of God, are praying for a revival in our time. Tens of thousands of prayers meet God every hour for a revival in our time. And it is written in the Scriptures, If the people that are called by my name shall assemble themselves together and will pray, then I'll hear from heaven. Now, if the children of God are assembling themselves together and praying for revival in our time, and revival is not coming, then there must be something wrong somewhere. Now, remember that only anything can work as you work in the law of that thing. The cosmic forces can only move according to cosmic law. The planets can only move as they're moved by the law of the planets. The sun can only rise according as the earth turns to the sun. And that there's everything has to work according to the law of its plan. For God made all things and made a law for that thing. And then it's got to turn and to work and to operate according to the law of that item. It will not work correctly any other way. Put a chain on a sprocket and then put it on a round peg. You might be able to make a little bit of time, but the only way that you'll ever make correct time with that chain is to put a sprocket that's equal to the sprocket that's in the back of it, and then those little holes in that chain to meet just exactly time with the sprocket, then you can go somewhere. And I'm sure that we've got a wrong sprocket somewhere. Amen. The church is moving too slow for the hour we're living in. Amen. There's something radically wrong. Right. And it behooves us in this day at the near coming of the Lord to sit down and study this and see what's wrong. Amen. Find the cause. You can never find a cure till you find the cause. Amen. If a doctor, if you go into his office and you say, I'm having headaches and sick at my stomach, and he gives you a little aspirin or something and sends you away, he's just trying to get rid of you. A real, genuine doctor will diagnose that case until he finds what organs out of order. Amen. Then work from that organ. That's the way it is with the kingdom of God. We've got to find out what's wrong. Amen. 
then work from that. Amen. The Scripture is like a doctor's prescription. A doctor, a scientist who work hard to find a prescription to, for the, the killing of a certain germ disease that's in your body, like typhoid fever or, or some disease that they can give you a serum that will kill that typhoid germ. And yet it has to be so carefully handled out. So carefully handled out until this. If there is not enough of it, it will not help the patient. And if there's something else added, it might kill the patient. It's got to be given by the druggist just according to the prescription. Therefore, if there's something wrong in the church today that it's not progressing the way it should, it's to my opinion that we ought to go back to the prescription. Amen. Find out just exactly what's wrong. That this church is so sick that there is disease in our church. Sin disease. Amen. Then we've got to find out what the doctor prescribed and see if our druggist pastors are giving us the right prescription. Amen. And remember, you can add something to a real close diagnosed scripture and kill the patient. Amen. And maybe, I don't say we have, but what if some of our druggist has added something to God's prescription? If they have, they are killing the patient, Amen. letting them die in sin. Amen. Well, it's you say, well, if they was sincere, no, that doesn't excuse it. No. Amen. A, man, a druggist give a man carbolic acid here a few years ago, just as sincere as he could be in a registered pharmacy, and it killed the man. Yet he was sincere. There isn't sincerity. I've seen sincerity amongst the heathens that would make Christian sincerity look like something way back in the antique lines. Yeah, amen. Seen pagans that would lay their babies in the mouth of an alligator to sacrifice it to a god of the waters. I couldn't find that sincerity amongst Christians. I've seen people that would lay on spikes and break the bones of their feet when they're little children. I've seen them take babies and little fellows and cut them and mark them over and bleed them and sometimes take their lives. Deep sincerity, but they're wrong. Amen. Now, let's find something. Job, or Joel rather, I gave, think he gave us a great background here. And that's what we want to take for a reading. He said, you te tell your children. Let your children tell their children. And there's another and so forth to another generation, which would be the Gentiles. Tell Israel to keep telling it. And now this scripture that Joel spoke of, is fulfilled today as we, the Gentiles, has received it. He said that what the polymer worm has left has the caterpillar eaten, the caterpillar of the locust and so forth. And these insects, if you get your book on insects, you'll notice that that four different insects is the same self insect in four different stages of its life. All of us know that a, that a, a cocoon is nothing but a caterpillar covered over and it's going to hatch out a butterfly. And a butterfly is a caterpillar before it hatches out. The polymer worm, the locust, and uh, so forth is the same. It's the same insect. Now, 
Whatever, now listen close. Whatever happened in the first place with the insect of the palmer worm, it just become a caterpillar later. And the caterpillar become a locust later. And whatever it was that started in the beginning is still the same thing that's causing the trouble today. And let's go back now in the Scriptures and find out what started. Now, we know that we can only build a church first upon the material that God gave us to build it with. That's all we have. And I think before, I know this is strong and it's on tape. Hundreds of people around the world will hear it. But before we can ever have a building of a, the church of God, we will have to restore back all those things that these insects have eaten out of it. We'll have to go back and find out what the insects eat. And before this vine of the Lord, the great vine, He's the vine, we're the branches. And before we can ever find out or the church can stand in its formal and original power, we'll have to go back and find out what the insects eat. And that church will have to be restored back to that, or it will never stand in its power and glory of its first standing. Amen. If the bark's tore off of a tree, we got to get bark back on it again. Amen. Grow the bark first. You can't have apples till you grow the bark. Amen. For the bark is the sap line. The sap line is the lifeline. And the Scriptures, God's Holy Bible is the lifeline to any church. How could we ever bring up grape sap through sycamore bark? Just won't work. We've got to have grapevine bark. We've got to have the original bark. And... There's only one way that that bark could ever come back on a vine is when God grows it himself. Amen. We can't make something put on it. It won't work. Amen. No man-made scheme will ever work. It'll take God's way or it'll never live. Help. Man-made schemes will not work. You might wrap a rag around the tree and say, let it grow. A rag wasn't God's program. It's got to be bark. Lifeline. And when it comes from the roots, it'll produce the same life that the tree had before the insects eat it. No wonder we can't have healing campaigns. No wonder the churches are tore up. No wonder one will say, Oh, this, that, and the other. So disagreed. No wonder there's such isms among us. It's because we can't bear the real fruits of patience, long-suffering, goodness, meekness, gentleness. The lifeline has been cut off from the tree. And we'll never bring it up through the creeds of some rag or any other substituted bark. It'll take the power of Almighty God to grow that tree back to its condition again. Did not Jesus say, and the Scriptures has said, have eyes and can't see, have ears and can't hear. They just can't do it. And no man can come to God or to Christ until God reveals it to him. Amen. Praise the Lord. The other day I was talking and we were thinking of Scripture. I said, why can't people see that? I said, there it is. And I happened to think, I don't care how clear it is, how much the Scripture teaches it, 
You'll never be able to see it until God Himself shows it to you. Amen. I don't care how clear it is. And the whole Bible is built, and the whole church of the living God is built upon a spiritual revelation Amen. of the Word. Amen. Hallelujah. Why did Abel offer a more excellent sacrifice than Cain? Why didn't Abel follow Cain? He had the most beautiful church. But it was revealed to him. Amen. When Jesus came from Mount Transfiguration, and they said, Who does man say I, the Son of Man, am? One said, Elias, one said, You, the prophet, and so forth. He said, But who do you say I am? Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. He said, Blessed art thou, Simon, the son of Jonas, for flesh and blood never revealed this to you. You Amen. never learn it, but some books are, but some Amen. seminary are, some station of man-made scheme. Amen. But my Father in heaven has revealed that to you. Amen. And upon this rock I'll build Amen. my church, Amen. and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. There you are. Spiritual revelation Amen. of the Word of God. Hallelujah. In Matthew 11, I believe it is, or 12, Somewhere along there, it is written that said, though Jesus had done so many miracles, so many signs that he was the Messiah, yet the people could not believe it. Because Isaiah said, they got eyes and they can't see. They got ears and they can't hear. How, though they were scholars, though they were top religionists, they were holy and without fault and without blame. If they were found one iota wrong, they were stoned without mercy. No man could lay a finger on them. They studied the Scriptures day and night, generation after generation. And still, God had blinded their eyes. So God did, that's what He said. God does what He wants to. We cannot tell Him what to do. Did not Paul, in the book of the Romans, the 8th chapter, say that God raised up Pharaoh and hardened his heart, blinded his eyes for this same purpose, that his will might be worked? Amen. Was not Esau and Jacob? Esau refused before the boy was ever born. God despised him. You see, it's all working according to God's great predestination. Amen. Amen. He's not one that's asleep. He knows exactly. And we judge men according to their, seem like their honesty or their sincerity. We judge churches according to their progress. We we take advances because of their great. That isn't it. Heavens and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. What the palmer worm has left has the caterpillar eaten. There's something wrong somewhere. Because God's Word is just as eternal as He's eternal. Amen. And God's Word can no more fail than God can fail Himself. Now, there's something wrong somewhere, so let's go back now. The background now we have laid. Let's go back. Take our text of Romans 3, 4. Let every man's Word be a lie. God's Word, the truth. Amen. I'm going to drive this down. And I want you to listen. Let it be God's truth. Let's line up with what God said regardless of what anybody else said. Amen. I want to use four different things of what I see in the Scripture that these insects that eat off of the church of the living God and has got the vine of God crippled or stunted. Amen. We admit you Methodists will admit. You Baptists will admit. You Presbyterians. You Pentecostals. You Nazarenes. You all admit. The tabernacle here admits. Yeah. There's something wrong. Amen. And we, the tabernacle, just as guilty as the rest. Amen. Yep. For he that knoweth to do good and do it not to him it's sin. Yes. Amen. Now. Let's go back, and I want to name four things 
just as scriptural as I know how to be, that these insects has eaten from the church, from its first original condition. Now, the first thing, the church was established on the day of Pentecost. Peter preached the, the inauguration sermon at the Becaloid service. When the church was born, the Christian church was born on the day of Pentecost. And if God is infinite, infinite and cannot change, His church must remain as it was at the beginning. Amen. Do you admit that? Amen. The church must ever remain the same as it was. But man is tankered with it. Put their own interpretations in it. Don't you never try to interpret the Word of God. Say just what it says. Amen. Don't care how it is. So let's line up with it. That's all. Amen. Don't change the Word. The Bible said that the Scripture is not any private interpretation. Amen. We have no right to say these things. We just got to read it and say just exactly like it says. Amen. And believe it the same way. I don't care how ridiculous it seems. Believe it anyhow. Amen. The pulpit's no place for a joke. It's a place for sincerity. Amen. I do not mean this to be joking. I mean this to quote something that was told me. It said there was an old colored brother down in the South, packed the Bible, and his boss is making fun of him. He said, you can't read it. What do you pack it for? He said, I pack it because I believe it. That's a good reason. I can't read it, but I know there's something in it that's right. Amen. said, I even believe the kibber on the outside of it. It's got a Holy Bible wrote on it. I believe it. He said, anything that Bible would say to you, I guess you'd do it. He said, yes, sir. If you read it out of the Bible, I'll do it. If it's a commandment of God. He said, then what if I read out of that Bible and told you the Lord said you to jump through that wall there, that big stone wall? How in the world would you ever jump through the stone wall if there's no hole in it? He said, if you read that out of the Bible and the Lord told me to jump, he'd have the hole there when I got there. And that's right. Amen. Amen. God says so, no matter how ridiculous it seems, you step forward on it. It's up to God to take care of the rest of it. Amen. That's his business. It's your business to step. Now, one of the first things that I'd like to speak to you for at least a few minutes, after we have found out that the foundation must be original, it must go back to the foundation. It must go back to where it was the vine. If something's wrong with it and the vine's not operating right, let's go back and find out what's wrong. Amen. Now, one of the first things that I'd like to mention is that something has gone from our church. One of the main things is faith. Oh, amen. The people don't have faith today like they had in that day. Some kind of a canker worm of some sort has got in and eat off the lifeline of faith. They changed it. Today their faith rests upon uh, some kind of, uh, of a big church denomination. But Jude told us in Jude, the third verse, it said, Beloved, I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. It was needful for me to write unto you, I have it here before me, and to exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith, Amen. not a faith, the faith, that was once delivered unto the saints. Hallelujah. That was 33 years before for this as faith was delivered. Faith. Now, not the people say, well, that's against my faith. There's only one faith. Amen. One Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Amen. Amen. You might have a faith, but we want the faith. Amen. Amen. Earnestly contend. That's argue for. Stand, stand up for. Earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Amen. When were they called saints? When they were sanctified, Amen. the Holy Spirit sanctified them. They were called saints. Amen. Now Jude says, a brother, foster brother of Jesus, 
I want you to earnestly Amen. contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Don't never let that faith drop. Praise the Lord. And the faith of the saints was not in creeds, not in denominations, not in church buildings, not in associations, but it was in the presence of the living God. Amen. They had faith to heal the sick, cast out devils, do miracles. All the great promises that Jesus made, that first church held on to that. Amen. It was the lifeline. Listen here. Listen close to what I want to tell you. The ever presence of the living God is the lifeline of any church or any bunch of people. The ever presence of the living God to perform and to do and to act and to live with the people as he did at the beginning. Amen. If the presence of the living God brought a Pentecost with power, was signed with wonders, brought a people so full of the glory of God till they shouted and spoke with other languages and went and martyrs for the faith. Let's earnestly contend for that faith until death shall set us free. Earnestly contend for it. We will not compromise upon reading books, taking some man-made theology. We'll not compromise upon some creeds or some prayer books or something somebody else has said. My faith is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood with righteousness. All around my soul gives way that he's all my hope and stay for on Christ's Amen. solid rock I stand. All other grounds is sinking sands. Amen. No creed but Christ. No law but love and no book but the Bible. Amen. No creed books. The Bible has to say it. The Bible has to not only say it, but say it every time the same. Must say it from Genesis to Revelation. Amen. It must go in every little web and weave into every part of the Word. If it doesn't, then I've got the wrong interpretation of it because God cannot dispute His own Word. Amen. If it doesn't say the same thing to every little fiber, if this shirt here is wove throughout with the same fiber, Amen. it's what makes it what it is. It's what makes it white. That's what the church is. If it's going to be a white church, born again without spot, without wrinkle. It's got to be woven with the same kind of a fiber that it started off with on the day of Pentecost. A Holy Ghost experience burning and weaving. You cannot add a piece of rotten goods. You cannot add a piece of burlap sack to it. It won't work. It'll mire it. Some kind of a little old canker worm has come in and eaten that faith off. And stand up and say, I believe in the Holy Church, the Holy Roman Catholic Church. I believe in, I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Amen. I believe He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the faith and the power of His resurrection lives within me today. Hallelujah. Because He lives, I live also. Not because of a creed, not because of a denomination, but because Christ lives and I'm in Christ. I live by Him and with Him and I live through Him. Amen. And his life fibers itself through me. Hallelujah. If it don't, then I can't call myself his. He just don't take my head. He takes my heart, my movements, my everything. Weaves itself into it. He weaves itself into the Word. The Word can't say one thing one place and something else this other place. I know it's written like that. It's written that way for a purpose. Jesus said so, and thank God Amen. that he, he hid it from the eyes of the wise and prudent. And would reveal it to babes such as would learn. That's God's purpose in doing so. He had, why did he ever let a sinner come? He had to let a sinner come for the purpose of him being a Savior. Amen. He's greater than a sin. He wouldn't have had to be a sin. He wouldn't have had to let Satan make the first sin. But the reason Satan created the first sin or perverted the righteousness to sin, the reason he did it so God could be a Savior. Amen. He let the man get sick because he's a healer. And he has to be just. And he has to put the tree of life 
and the tree of death before every man like he did Adam and Eve, or he did wrong when he put it before Adam and Eve. Amen. Now it's up to you. Now, notice, faith, the true faith, the real faith, the faith. Now we take our churches today. Look at us. Look at our Pentecostal people. Look at our Baptist people. Our Presbyterians, Nazarenes, Pilgrim Holiness, and the Brandon Tabernacle. Amen. All of us, we're guilty of not earnestly contending for that faith. Amen. A little fuss can come up in the church of the Brandon Tabernacle. I'm at home, I can talk about you now. Amen. And they'll form a little clique, and one get on one side and one on the other. Amen. Is that contending for the faith that was once delivered to the saints? Does that sound like the apostolic doctrine? No, sir, brother. They had an Ananias and Sapphira case. Amen. God's still the same God. And we've seen that proven. No, earnestly continuing. The people go out there and say, Well, my faith don't teach the, uh, 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 miracles. They teach that the days of miracles is past. Then you're not contending for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. A bunch of fanaticism myself. But I believe that there's a real genuine Amen. gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And we earnestly contend for that. Amen. Right, we believe it. Saints speak with tongues. They say, I don't believe in divine healing. I don't believe in a bunch of fanaticism. But we do believe there is a God that He heals the sick and He's the same yesterday Amen. today and forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. I've seen a lot that's called discernment. I don't believe in but I know there's truly a discerning spirit of God, the gift of knowledge that calls and speaks, and it's perfect Amen. every time. Amen. We're earnestly contending for that. Amen. That faith that was once delivered to the saints. Our dreams and stomach fulls of, of fresh meats are, are full of something or another that causes you to have nightmares, you jump up and call it a vision. But there's a real genuine vision of God. Amen. Right. God promised it. Jesus Christ the same yesterday and forever. He does that. And it never fails. The Bible says there be one among you who's spiritual or prophet. And let him speak in what he says. If it comes to pass, then hear him. Amen. For I'm with him. If it don't, don't hear him. Because he's a false prophet. God can't lie. God tells the truth all the time. Amen. Let it be so. Now we find that that's true. There's those things that look at Paul out there that night. All hopes is gone. The devil laughing on every day, gleaming his teeth on every time the waves jumped up and the lightning struck. I'll sink that apostle out here, the low ship waterlogged, and days and days, 14 days and nights, the stars never even shine. Yeah. And how that little old ship tossed about yeah. him walking around, dragging a chain behind him for preaching the gospel. Yeah. Hallelujah! And we can't even let nobody talk about us unless we have to blow up like a toad frog eating buckshot. We're always carrying on about something. And then say we're earnestly contending for the faith. The Branham Tabernacle needs a whole lot to be straightened out first. So does the Pentecostals and the Baptists and the Nazarenes. That's the reason we're not getting any word. We're not honest and sincere. We've ever come face to face with that thing. That, that makes us unmovable. Always the God. Amen. Faith that was once delivered to the saints. Hallelujah. The old caterpillar come in, canker worm, and eat it off. All the days of miracles is past. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do that. If God brought forth his first branch out Amen. of that vine with a Pentecostal branch. Amen. Amen. With power, visions, revelations, Amen. healings, sanctification, Holy Spirit. Amen. The next branch will be the same thing. Amen. Certainly will. Every time it... Every time that vine puts forth a branch, it'll be exactly like the one was at the first place. You, as I said last night, talking to a group of brothers, you can't get a grapevine to bear pumpkins. And you can't get a pumpkin vine to bear grapes. That's true. It's whatever the life is in that vine that produces it. And if Christ is in that vine, and the life of Christ is in that person, it'll be like Jesus. It'll bear the fruits of Him. It's a spirit that can't do nothing else but do it. Got to produce that life, because it's the same life. You just can't 
produce anything else. It'll act like him. It'll talk like him. It'll walk like him. It'll heal like him. It'll see visions like him. It'll produce exactly his life perfectly every time because it's his life. You're just a chef. A man's just like a water pipe. He's not the water. He's just a pipe. Take the water out of him, he'll rust. Well, that's what's the matter today. There's too many of us rusting that once had an experience. Keep the water flowing. That's what keeps the lifeline going. Amen. I heard a fellow preaching one time said there was a sow in the water. It makes the water all muddy. The best thing in the Bible speaks of that. Get the hog out of the water. You get down here, you get a nice spring. And down here somewhere, the big spring's pouring out in front of the mountain. The water's all muddy. You better get the hogs out of it. Amen. So the water will clear up. There's a lot of things that we got to get out. Amen. Before the waters will ever come from the fountain, filled with blood drawing from the angles, veins. Where sinners plunge beneath the blood and lose all their guilty stains, their indifferences and chattering and so forth. Sixteen ministers, because they believe, they thought that I believe that God kept his church and preserved his church. The scripture said, He that heareth my word, not him that makes out he hears it. That's the one that God has opened his eyes and ears to hear. No man can do it till God opens his eyes and ears. He that heareth my words and believeth on him and send me has everlasting life and shall never come to the judgment, but has already passed from death unto life. Amen. Amen. What's going to happen to him? Did God lie or did he tell the truth? Is man right? Or, oh, you can get the Holy Ghost and be saved and tomorrow you can be lost and go to hell. Don't you never believe that, Tommy Rock? That's a lie. You're ever born again. Your whole nature is fixed different. If a man ever is planted in Christ and he with the life of the grapevines coming through him, he'll never bear pumpkins no more. Amen. You might tie one on him, but he knows something's wrong. He'll lay there and grow until it's taken off of him. Amen. There's too much weight for him. Bows him down too close to the ground. He likes to grow up. Amen. Can't hang a pumpkin on a grapevine. Amen. Notice. All contending for the faith that was earnestly contending, not just contending, but earnestly contending between life and death. We'll jump on to another one. You can stay a long time on that. The next thing that we'd like to say for is brotherly love has been eaten away from the vine. Brotherly love. Jesus said, this will all men know you're my disciples when you have love one for another. Well, now, let's just take an example. If a man don't believe the same as I do, I'll go right into his congregation and preach with him. Just preach what he believes and go right ahead and let it go, because I love him. By the fruits you know them. If they don't believe it and they haven't got brotherly love, they drop out, disagree, fall away. I have nothing to do with it. Why don't you come to me and talk to me about it? You don't know what I believe, see. What difference does it make any of what I believe? It's who I believe. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ. I've never left a meeting yet with bad taste as I know of. But you see, brotherly love has been all discarded. And Paul said it. First Corinthians 13, he said, Let brotherly love continue. But brotherly love has been taken away. Now watch. Every time I listen close now, we're going into strong meats. Every time that the devil takes something off of the tree, we we'll say the bark, the insect eats the bark off, he puts an old man-made rag around it to take its place. Amen. Put a rag around a sap line of a tree, it won't send the sap on up into the fruits of the tree, it won't bear any fruits, it'll drop right back down to the ground. And that's the reason today we can't have revival in our day. It's too much man-made dogma. The lifeline won't walk through an old Great rag, it'll set life will drop right back down to the ground. That's the reason our revivals fail. As Billy Graham said the other day, he was in England where he had a great revival. And the very place where he was preaching, he had to take his wife from the parks because the men and women living in Marley right out in the parks. What was the matter? Man made rags instead of God growing bark. It won't carry the life. A church that's wrapped around a man-made creed will not send the power of God up into the branches. It'll say the days of miracles is past and drop it flat on the ground. Amen. Amen. I know you.
you think I'm crazy, but if I am, let me alone. I feel good this way. Amen. It'll drop the Word of God if God says here, I'm the Lord. I never change. Well, he's changed in this day, says the rag, drops it down. Where it first started was in the early age, when they had no denominations, and man has tried to restore brotherhood through denominations. Brotherly love has been cut off because of denominations. Show me one time that God ever had an organization or a denomination and ever did have his church at a denomination or ever a denomination ever raised that didn't fall and never rise again. Amen. Now, I've been reading since I come from up there on this very subject. I've read the Fox Book of the Martyrs. I've read Josephus, early writing. I've read Hossip's Two Babylons. I've read the early ages of the Pemberman. I, all, and the Nicene Fathers. Now, just before the Nicene Council, after Pentecost. And there has never been a denomination that God ever ordained in the Bible. Then when we ordained and made denominations, we got out of the will of God a canker worm called denomination. Eat off the original bark of brotherly love and denominate it by carrying a rag around it. And the life of God comes right up through the root church, the root and the offspring of David. When it begins to come up through the Holy Spirit, then the denomination said, the days of miracles is past. You don't have to speak with tongues today. There's no such thing as the baptism of the Holy Ghost. There's no divine healing. That was for age gone. It's gone long ago. And here's the branches up here. It's suffering. The fruits of a good, healthy tree don't have to be sprayed. Why are we spraying over and over and over for contamination of worms? Why are we doing it for is because the tree's not healthy. What's the matter? It's not healthy. Creeds and denominations has eaten the lifeline out of it. Absolutely. Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, Pentecostals eat the lifeline out of the tree, trying to substitute a denomination to bring all men under politics. God don't want us joined together under politics and creeds. We are joined together by the Holy Spirit. God bless us. Tears out the sin of our heart and makes us all one in Christ Jesus. That's true, my brother. That's true, my sister. That started in the early ages. At the death of Christ and the resurrection. At the death of the apostles. 300 years later, they brought the Nicene Council in. That's when they formed the first organization, which was the Catholic Church. Means, Catholic means universal. From the Catholic Church come out Luther. From Luther come out Wesley. From Wesley come out Pentecost. All down the little, little bypasses around the other little ones, like oh, Nazarene, Pilgrim Holiness, and so forth, Baptist, and uh, all of that. They all come out of that. Amen. All right in the same cahoots. Yes. Denomination, when God gives a church a blessing or a group of people, quickly they draw a little fence around it, and here's where they take their sand. God wants to tear down every fence. Amen. Amen. I remember when I first went west. It was the times of Biscuit Up, Kansas. And I was putting wheat in there. I'd see them old cowboys that never know nothing about a tractor or, or anything or raising any wheat. All they know was herding cattle. And when they went to bring in automobiles and putting golf courses and wearing these little neat pants they used to wear to play golf in and all that stuff like that, I'd see them old man with the long white hair hanging under their hat. See him bring in binders and wheat growers and stuff like that. Stick his foot in the saddle and pull his hat down, put fences around the place. He couldn't stand that. He knew nothing about being fenced in. He was on the range by God and himself. The gray hairs hanging under his hat like that, crying tears, just pulling down. Said, "I can't stand these things." Right on towards the setting of the sun. God help us today to have pilgrims. That won't stand to be fenced in by denomination and creed. Right towards the setting of the sun. Amen. With a faith that's unmovable that was once given to the saints. With a brotherly love that breaks all creeds and fences down. And say, we are brethren, we are one in Christ Jesus. Whatever God says, we say amen behind it. Amen. Give us that type of man. Yeah, creeds. Then they form what they call the... The pre-Nicene father, 
they got together. In this, they formed a council. In the council was hatched out the Catholic Church, which means the universal church, tore off all the little churches around where God was dealing and forced them into one church and one religion. They put an ox on one arm, an ox on the other, hang a crucifix before man, tell him kiss it or it, and bow down to receive Catholic religion, or they start one ox one way, one the other, and pull him apart. Amen. Tuck a woman and take her hair and put it in a barrel of pitch, and ask her if she'd cru- kiss this crucifix, she'd either do it and bow to Catholic religion, or they'd light the hair on her head and burn her up. Put them on the stakes and everything else. Put them in what they call the iron woman, press them pegs, trying to get them to kiss a crucifix and embrace what they call Christian religion, and grind them right into the dust. The martyr stood there without a bat in his eye. Amen. He knew where he was standing. Amen. He knew who he had believed. He was able of knowing this, that God could raise him up at the last day because he Amen. promised it before he had bowed down any man-made old dirty rag sap lines. He had died on the stump. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me die the same place. If my God doesn't come in my generation, I'll die on the stump where the cake will lead it to. Amen. Believing that Jesus Christ and His church and His word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Might not be able to produce it out of all these branches because old sap lines out here of denomination and creed cut me off and dropped me like a hot potato. That might be true, but I'll stand wild on the stump and cry that the hour will come. God will restore His church to its former condition. Praise the Lord. This may hurt. Third thing. I don't want it to. Watch one of the great sap lines to come. In doing that time of the organization, that's what knocked the sap line to begin with. The first place that they'd had brotherly love among one another, they never needed an organization. And then when they see they couldn't have, they wasn't going to have brotherly love, or they thought they wasn't, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Amen. Instead of taking God's word, they had an organization. Luther, come out of that organization. 550 years later, come out. What did he do? Turn right around and the same thing they did. Amen. Right out of that come Calvin. Right out of there come Wesley. Right out of Wesley come the Baptists, Presbyterians, on down to the Pentecostals. And the Pentecostals... After the Nazarene comes the Pentecostal, and after Pentecostal, what will? I hope the coming of Christ. Because the Pentecostal have done the very same thing that the rest of them done. Revelation 12 says that they would do it. She is a whore, and they were prostitutes. They were harlots. The Catholic Church, she said, was a whore in the Bible. W-H-O-R-E. 1 Corinthians 12 said so. And said her daughters... Now, if they cannot be man, you know, said her sons, said her daughters. Churches are represented in the Bible as women. And her daughters were prostitutes. Amen. See, the same thing. What kind of how prostitute committing spiritual fornication against God's Word? Right. Holding on to a denominational rag instead of standing earnestly for the faith that was once Amen. Amen. Instead of going back and taking the Word of God. I talked to a priest. You're not long ago. He said, oh, I don't care what the Bible says. We're the church. I said, that's the word of God. He said, we made it. I said, why have it changed so much? You ain't got one thing in your church that this Bible says that you teach. I was telling him I baptized the girl in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, you know, the Catholic church used to do that. I said, when? There's every history of the churches that I know of laying right there. He said, we believe our catechism. I said, what about the history? He said, we don't care what history says. We believe the catechism. I said, how do you know there was a George Washington and Abraham Lincoln? How you know there's the Pilgrim Fathers? Because we believe our history. And I said there's no place that the Catholic Church has ever organized for 360 years after the death of the last apostle. Amen. Amen. I said in the Catholic Church was a new one. They did not baptize in the name of Jesus Christ. Because there's the very first foundation of bringing in the false baptism. And she's, he said, well, now, wait a minute. He said, we have a right. We're the church. We do what we want to because God is in his church. I said, God's in his word. Amen. Not in his church. If the church disagrees with the word, then there's something wrong. Amen. Let my word be true and every other man's word alive. Amen. God's word being true. The Lord. Make his word right. Yeah. We'll go back to his word. See what the canker worm eating? Now, during the time of the early Nicene fathers, Gene, you just took it too. The great Nicene council produced a great argument on account of was there one God or was there three gods? 
Father being one, Son being two, God, the Holy Ghost being three. And they adopted that there was three gods. Now, if you don't believe that, I'll read it to you right now, the Nicene Council. The Nicene Fathers. They did it. Three gods. There's one God. There's only one. He's Jehovah God. The great I Am. The Alpha Omega. The beginning and the end. They had now in order to do that, they had to get something to go with it. In order to do that, they tried to say, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Now, absolutely, there's no such a thing. It's not three gods. That's heathenism. There's three offices of the same God. The fatherhood. When God dwells alone, holy, His laws, His righteousness makes Him holy. He wanted to be in man. He wanted to worship with man. He wanted man to worship Him. He had to come to man. And then when He did, He created, overshadowed a little virgin named Mary. God Jehovah did. And created in her womb a cell, a blood cell. That blood cell developed cells and was brought forth a man, which was Christ Jesus. God Almighty, the Father, dwelt in him. At the day of the baptism, when he received the Holy Ghost, on the day when John baptized him, John said, I beheld and saw the Spirit of God like a dove descending from heaven, and a voice saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am pleased to dwell in. Jesus said that God was with him. I and my Father are one. My Father dwells in me. Not Jesus and being one with God, but Jesus, God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. Amen. And you oneness, brethren, many of you, get off the wrong track when you try to think that God is one like your fingers when he can't be his own father. Amen. He can't be, but he is God. God is Jehovah, the Spirit. Christ was the house that he dwelt in. Amen. And then he sacrificed this life. And when he did, he gave up the Spirit. And through this unadulterated blood that he shed, he sanctified me. That he might come himself and dwell in me and in you. And God is with us. That's the Holy Ghost, which is the same, very same God, Jehovah. God, I'll be with you, even in you, to the end of the world. And the things that I do shall you do also. There's where the caterpillars begin to eat. The canker worms. Trying to make God the Father sitting in glory. God the Son sitting upon some right hand he's got. The right hand of God, where the Bible said, I looked up and seen Jesus stand at the right hand of God, Philip, or Stephen's when he was stoned. Don't mean that God's got a right hand and Jesus is standing up on top of his right hand. It means that he's in the right hand of power and authority. Amen. All powers in heavens and earth is given unto me, said Jesus. Amen. He was in authority. God was in Christ. He's in the, in him, the Bible said in him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. When you try to make three individual gods, you're just pegging as pagan can be. Amen. Now, this is going to pinch. Fourthly, when they had three gods, they had a representative baptism for him. For the three gods. So the devil blinded their eyes of Matthew 28, 19. Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptize them to the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Teach them to observe whatever I have done. Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. The devil blinded their eyes to that. Now hold that. Now here's where I have to drive a nail and it's going to hurt. But I want you to listen. It's the truth. God help it to be. Uh, you just search the scriptures. You find in the Bible where anybody was ever baptized in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. You find one place anybody was ever baptized. Look, you say the devil, the devil takes that scripture and makes it look like something that it isn't. Did not he say the same thing to Jesus? It is written. He's going to give his angel charge concerning this damn time to dash his foot against the stone. Amen. He never dashed his foot against the stone. But the devil was trying to make him see something that the scriptures didn't say. Amen. He was smart. He was filled with God. Amen. God was in him. Amen. And God being in a man will make his revelation known. Amen. Certainly. I'll take you to Matthew 28, 19. Go ye therefore, teach all nations. Baptizing them into the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Now watch how the extreme tritheist from the Catholic Church never was in the Bible, never was the Ananias and Fathers, pre Ananias and Fathers. They were everyone baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Every one of them. They come to the Catholic Church, come from now on out into the Protestant Church. Now, how can you see it without God opening your eyes? 
You can. I pray that God will open your eyes to this. Amen. And just listen closely now. Now I'm going to take your scripture, Matthew 28, 19. Go ye teach all nations, baptize them, and to the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. How was you baptized? In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. That's not even written in the scripture. Now I want some man, you say the blessed Holy Trinity. Find me the word Trinity anywhere in the pages of God's Bible. It's a man-made scheme. An old dirty church rag wrapped around to take the place of the sacrament of God's Amen. Holy Spirit. Amen. There's no such a thing. There's no such a thing. You find and come to me, you're duty bound to do it as a Christian if you find it. It's not in God's holy writings. And the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is hatched out of hell. There's no such a thing as three gods. Now, I believe in the fatherhood of God. I believe in the sonship of God. I believe in the Holy Ghost dispensation of God. But it's the same God in every dispensation, not three gods. Now, in the name of the Father, the Bible didn't say go baptize in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. They go baptize, Jesus said, looking back, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Not in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, that make them individuals. But it's not in the name of the Father and ends a conjunction with your same subject. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Not in the name of the Father, name of the Son, name of the Holy Ghost. But in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. See, now look, here stands the anointed apostles going up to Pentecost to receive the Holy Ghost. They went right straight to Pentecost and received the Holy Ghost. Now, the church is inaugurated. What are we going to do? The first thing comes out. The prescription has got to be made. Dr. Simon Peters got to write the first prescription because Jesus gave him the opinion. Amen. I give unto thee the keys, Peter. Amen. Whatever you bind, what prescription you write, your order, I'll receive it in the drugstore. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Write it, and I'll accept it. What did they do? When the old man heard all this noise abroad bro like that, they said, What meaneth this? Others speaking in tongues. And they said, We hear the wonderful works of God. What did Peter say? Repent, every one of you, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ Amen. for the remission of your Amen. sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now, what did they do? They added Father, Son, Holy Ghost here, which doesn't go in the prescription. Amen. Amen. Right. What else did they add? You don't have to get out and act like they did. They don't give you joy and power and speaking in tongues and all these things. You don't have to have it. Just make your confession. Shake hands. That's some more poison. Don't put the devil. Amen. If it made them act like that when they took the medicine, it'll make you act the same way. Amen. Amen. Take his prescription. Exactly right. Hallelujah. What the palmer worm left the caterpillar eating. Now remember, Amen. if there never was a person ever baptized in the Bible any other way but in the name of Jesus Christ, Jews and Gentiles and outsiders and everything else all had to come and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. I challenge any man to show me where one person was ever baptized in the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Amen. Or for 300 years after the death of the last apostle. Well, it's plainer than my ten fingers before me. You can't see it until God opens your eyes. But that, if that isn't the right revelation, then why did Peter have the same revelation to turn right back ten days after Jesus told him, go baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Peter turned right back around and said, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, every one of you. Then this must be the same revelation he got, and the church out there in the Trinitarian has got the wrong revelation. Then they're not using the sap line. They took a rag and wrapped it around there, and it's dropping the life of God up on there. It'll kill the patient. Oh, how many more things could we go to? In your creeds and things, what it's done. Let me clear this little one up. Amen. I want you to go in and take your Bibles just a minute. So it'll just make it so simple that children understand. Turn to Matthew, the first chapter. You got Matthew 28, 19. Go to Matthew, the first chapter, the 18th verse. Look here. I want you to look close. This is the Father on my left. This is the Son in the center. This is the Holy Ghost on the right. Now, who is the Father of Jesus Christ? God the Father. Is that right? You all believe that? I sure do. God the Father is the Father of the Lord Jesus. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Now I'm quoting Scripture. Look, look, you can look it up when you go home or look it up now. Now the birth of Jesus Christ is on this wise. Matthew 1. Look here. As I've often said, if you're reading a storybook, 
And read over here in the back. Just pick up Matthew 28, 19. Like this in the story book. John and Mary lived happy ever after. Who is John and Mary? Go back to the first book and find out who John and Mary is. If he said, Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father. I want to ask you something. Is the Father a name? It certainly isn't. In the name of the Son? Is Son a name? It's a title. It's like Father. Is Holy Ghost a name? No, it's a title. Holy Ghost is what it is. You say Holy Ghost is a noun. So is human. <laughs> See, I am a human, but my name's not human. That's what it is. It is the Holy Ghost. That's not His name. That's what it is. Then if Father's no name, Holy Ghost is no name, and Son's no name, then what was the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost? <laughs> Certainly. Certainly. Now, See, Father's not a name. He said, go baptize them in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Ghost. Peter turned back around and said, it's the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, that's exactly what the procedure, they followed all through the Bible. Now, what did they do? What has the translators, or the church man done? What's the organization's done? Wrapped an old denominational rag around in order to be popular with the rest of it. If I have to eat soda crackers and drink branch water and be martyred, I'll stand for God's truth and die all this stuff. Amen. There's not no man, the Pope of Rome or no bishop or cardinal can withstand that. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. What's the matter? What the Palmer worm left, what the Methodist left, the Baptist eating. What the Baptist left, the Pentecostal eating. Right. Right. What, a, what, a, what a place the lifelines are all gone. This is just a minor thing. Now, who is Father, Son, Holy Ghost? Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Father's no name, Son's no name, Holy Ghost no name. What name are you talking about? Well, that's like John and Mary. Let's go back to find out what it was. Now the birth of Jesus Christ is on this wine. When his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before, she came, before they came together, she was found with the child of the... What? The Holy Ghost. I thought you said God was his father. How can God be his father and the Holy Ghost be his father? Now you see you Trinitarians and hollering to oneness? <laughs> Pot can't call a kid a greasy. Look here. No. See what I mean? The father, he said that the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise when the mother Mary was espoused to Joseph. Before they came together, she was found with the child of the Holy Ghost. Then God the Father had nothing to do with it. If, if God the Father and God the Holy Ghost isn't the self-same person, then Jesus had two fathers and our Savior was the illegitimate child. Born with two different spirits. About two different spirits. The birth of Jesus Christ was he was conceived by the Holy Ghost. Do you believe that? Yeah. Then God the Father and the Holy Ghost is the self-same spirit who had two fathers. Amen. All of this is done might be fulfilled, which is spoken to the prophet of the Lord, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and she shall bring forth a child and they a son, and they shall call his name this is him, Jesus, which is uh, Emmanuel, which is being interpreted what? And what is the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost? Certainly. His name shall be called, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now, what is Father, Son, Holy Ghost? The Lord Jesus Christ. What is the name of it? Not name. Father's not a name. Son's not a name. Holy Ghost is not a name. But Jesus Christ is Lord Jesus Christ, which is the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. The three offices of God manifested in flesh in one person. Amen. Amen. Brother, that's the truth. So help me. God, I'll stand in the day of judgment over there. What's a canker worm done? Got God the Father up in heaven. God the Son sitting over here on the throne. And God the whole. No wonder we can get no word. God is in you. Amen. With you. I'll be with you even in you to the end of the world. And the things that I do shall you do also. Not another person, but the same Holy Ghost. The same person. Same God. Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus himself was a tabernacle in which God dwelt in to manifest himself. Because he was a spirit. Amen. He was a spirit. Now Jesus wasn't eternal. God's eternal. Jesus now is eternal because God has taken up a body. There was one time before the foundation of the world, I was eternal. When God thought of me, I was thought of before the foundation of the world. My name was put in the Lamb's book of life and so was yours before there's even one grain of sand. Amen. How many knows that's the Bible? Amen. How many know that God put your name in the Lamb's book of life before the foundation of the world? Amen. Then in God's thinking, we were born right then into His kingdom. Amen. 
temple. One day there come a body through a holy wedlock, my father and mother, and they sired me, and here I come. William Branham represented in a body of flesh. Now you know me as William Branham, a man. God know me as William Branham, a thought in his own mind Amen. and an expression. What is a word? A word is a thought expressed. When he spoke and said, let him come, I come. When he says, let him come again, I'll come again. Yes, sir. It's a a thought. A word is a thought expressed. God's already given the word. The only thing is thought was he expressed it. When he expresses it, it happens. Let there be and there was. There's God. The omnipotent, all-powerful, almighty Jehovah. Now he's represented. Order now to carry this out. They had to get a false baptism. To make this, you see, it's a hid. The world don't see it. And it can't be seen. Now watch closely. While we have enough time yet to, to close and have the prayer line. All right, it's longer than I thought I was on it. Just a minute now, I've got something else I want to tell you. Therefore, Father, Son, Holy Spirit is one true God. He has one name. His name is Jesus Christ. He was born Christ the Lord when he was born. He, uh, Christ means the anointed one. The Lord means ownership. He was ownership and Lord. And then God came down and dwelt him, which made him both Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Alpha, Omega, the beginning and the ending. He that was, which is, and shall come, the root and offspring of David. Amen. Both root and offspring of David. The morning star, the first and the last. That's him. Amen. Oh, what the Palmer worm has left. How can you worship unless you know what you're worshiping? How can you be spiritual unless you've got the Holy Spirit in you? If you're all tied up with a bunch of church creeds that will make you act like church people and, and are dignified and religious and things like that, that's all good moral acts. But, brother, you've got to be born again by the genuine Holy Ghost that only comes by the Word of God. And the true Word of God, when it comes into you, it'll manifest the truth. He, the Holy Ghost, and he'll come, he'll testify to me, he'll manifest truth. He'll take the things that I've showed you, uh, show, uh, t- things that I have said, and will show them to you. Amen. The Holy Ghost will. What he'll do, there he is. What the Palmer worm left, the caterpillar eating. What the Catholic left, the Lutheran eating. What the Lutheran eat, left, the Methodist eating. What the Methodist left, the Pentecostal eating. Where's it got to? All this conglomeration of sin. All these things. Teachings, other things we can say. Oh my, shaking hands, sprinkling water. Whoever heard of sprinkling, show it to me in the Bible. Whoever heard of pouring water, show it to me in the Bible. Baptism, come the word baptism, which means to be buried and covered up. Right? That's the truth of God's Word. Oh, we had time we could go on and on with the false things. I say this, my beloved people, listen to me. I'll stand with you someday in the day of judgment. I'll have to answer. I'll never answer to a creed, so help me God. I'll answer to the Bible. That's the book I'll stand by. There is no place in the Bible or that they ever receive the Holy Ghost without having emotions, speaking with tongues and shoutings and praises of God and prophecies and manifestations. They never did just walk up and shake hands with the preacher and walk away. There's no place in the Bible they ever did receive uh, or ever was baptized and outside being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. There never was no place in the Bible they ever taught Trinity. It was always a one God. Here you, O Israel, I'm the Lord your God, one God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. I'm the Lord thy God. Not a Father and a Son and a Holy Ghost, but I'm God. Wherever He's God. He always was God. He always will be God. Amen. And when a denomination will drop you, when you're coming to a congregation and try to show brotherly love, even with their denominations to try to pick up and save what you can, pull them in, let God take the rest of it. And because that you stand on Bible truth, they excommunicate you. Amen. It can't be nothing but the low-down trick of the devil to get the children from coming in to see the meeting and to be saved. Amen. That's right. There's a solid rock of God's Word, and I'll take any person any time that they want to and go with them in brotherly love, and I want you to show me one thing that I said that isn't the Bible truth. Amen. Yes, sir. It's true. Now, of course, you stand for it. You're excommunicated. I expect it to be that way. God said it would be that way. They did Him the same way. 
Where did you get the learnings? What school did you come from? What are you, Pharisee or Sadducee? He was a son of the living God. Yeah. Taking no sides with none of them. So help me, God, let me have gumption enough. Let me have principle enough. Let me be man enough. Let me be Christ enough to stand alone. If I stand, I have to stand that way and tell the Amen. truth. And stand. Amen. I'd rather preach the gospel to five people Amen. and have the millions that does here. Tell the truth. I've never compromised. I wanted this because God had told me these great signs and things is being produced like the manifestation of His resurrection and so forth. It's for the church. Those poor people out there and bound in them creeds and things have been so undocumented like embalmed. Amen. God bless your heart. I won't leave you in that condition. I'll tell you what God said. But I will restore to you Amen. all that the caterpillar has eaten, all that the canker worm has eaten, Amen. all that the palm worm has eaten. I will restore, saith the Lord. So help me, I make this prophecy. Before the coming of the Lord, the true apostolic faith, the true apostolic teaching, the true Bible spirit, the true, it's on its road now, trying to eat its way up, grow out again. The Pentecostal had it to start with. What did they do? Draw a little rhyme around it, begin to nominate it. And he cut it right off. It's exactly right. Here come along when the Lord sent these gifts, the humble little gifts that he gave me. They keep coming. They want me to be that a ladder rain outpour. Made it an organization out there. Want me to come join the assemblies. I've stood right in the midst of every branch that's hanging out there, right here at the stump of the tree, and saying, This is the foundation. Amen. Cut off these old rag lines here so the life can get into you. Amen. Then you'll have prophecies. You'll have discernment. You'll have spirit. You'll have power. You'll have the restoration of the true church Amen. when you get back to the true vine and the true life. Can't come to a ragged drop it right down and says it wasn't another day, it's another day. Hallelujah. It's forever the same. He's Alpha and Omega. Yeah. The beginning and the end. Hey. Absolutely. You'll have to come back to the foundation. For upon this rock I'll build my church. And the gates of hell can't prevail against it. God bless you, friend. I know you think I'm just a little bit naughty, a little out of order. But I'm not. I think I'm in order with this word. Amen. The, the Spirit of God is here. The same Spirit that wrote the Bible. If the Spirit that wrote the Bible say Amen every time the Bible's word just spoke. If there everybody was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, the true Spirit of God say Amen. That's the truth. If the Bible said Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and forever, I'll be with you always, even in the end of the world, the true Spirit of God say Amen. And if that is the true Spirit of God, then the true powers and manifestations of the Spirit will manifest itself with the true Spirit. Amen. Judge ye the word that you hear. Judge it by the Bible. Watch its actions. Watch its works. Is there candidates here to be baptized? That's never been baptized, wants to be baptized. Raise your hand. All right. If there's no baptizing today. All right. Then we'll pray for the sick. Is there anybody here that's sick? Raise up your hand. Wants to be prayed for. How many here are the strangers among us and wants to be prayed for? I don't know you. And I'm strange. I don't know you. All right. Sick and afflicted. I don't know you. If God is God, Amen. if He's God of the Word that I preach, Jesus said, The things that I do shall you also. Amen. Is that right? Yes. Jesus said, The things that I do shall you also. More than this will you do because I go to the Father. What was it? Turn from a man of body back into the pillar of fire again. When Paul met him on the road to Damascus, what was he? Pillar of fire. Is that right? Yes. Certainly was. What is he today? What is he in that picture? You say, well, you can say that, Brother Branham. If that truth is the truth of God, if it is the same pillar of fire, the same Jesus Christ, I claim His Spirit come into me, it'll do the same thing He did. Amen. It'll agree with every word He said. No matter what priest or denomination was to say, it'll speak His word. Uh, he spoke it. Their unbelief didn't stop Him. Their creeds and denomination here took no side with any of them. He preached the unadulterated Amen. gospel that He'd heard from God. Amen. He stood alone. Certainly did. On Calvary, there wasn't even one would stand by him. He stood alone. If you mount anything, you'll stand for God. You'll stand alone. It's you. It's not the world. It's not your church. It's not your denomination. It's you between you and God. I don't care what the, the Bram Tabernacle can do what they want to. I want them to believe God. I want them to come along. But if they don't, I'm not going to compromise with them and their little petty things. I'll stand for God. The Methodist, what will you do, Brother Brandon? The Trinitarian Pentecostal, I proved I love them. 
of went to them and sent into the assemblies of God and the church of God. And if the oneness, you disagree with the oneness because they're one standing like that. Yes, sir. Jesus had a father. He was God. They baptized in the name of Jesus. I baptize in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's many Jesuses, but there's only one Lord Jesus Christ. See? Not in Jesus' name, but in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Lord, Lord said on my Lord, Son on the right hand. Son, Jesus, Christ, Logos, that went out of God in the beginning. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. There you are. Oh, I'm so happy for it. My heart just rejoices. To know that his spirit, the spirit that wrote the word, agrees with the word, proves the life behind it, comes in, manifests itself. God be with you. Praise the name of Jesus. If Jesus Christ is Son of God, I've told the truth about his word. Now, you, you tabernacle people, I pray for you the other times we were late. I was over a little bit, run over a little bit. I was expecting much to be baptized. Look, if the Holy Spirit is here, we don't, uh, he'll, he'll heal you. I want those people who are strangers in our gates that, that's sick and afflicted. And now if I've told the truth about God, and these people told the truth that I don't know them, and they're sick and afflicted, if the Holy Spirit remains the same, he can reveal to me. If that's the same Holy Ghost and it's connected with the same stump down here that the canker worms is eat off of, but there's a little piece of bark running down there that's connecting this together, it'll work just like yes, it did down there. Amen. Church priests say, oh, that ain't right. That's mental telepathy. That's uh, the uh, devil. That's fortune telling. They said the same about him if they called him master of the house. Be able to up. How much will they call his disciples? Amen. Right? Still that don't stop it. That just increases. It makes it go on. Yes, now, is he still God? Is he the same yesterday and forever? Does he honor his word? Amen. He does. And I constrain every one of you. If you've never been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't care what the old church rag says. That's a denomination. And I know man that I brought right in my study and study. Ground good man, I say, come here a minute. You show me where you are baptized in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. If that's scriptural. When it's printed down, say, I know it, Brother Brandon, but don't give this away on me. See? I said, support your doctrine. Show me where one. Everybody in the Bible, there's some baptized in no name at all. They had to come and be baptized over again before they get the Holy Ghost. Yeah. How many knows that? Amen. Amen. All pastors up the course of Exodus down to the Baptist. They had, a good, they had a good pastor. He was a converted lawyer, Apollo. And he said to them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? They said, we don't know where there will be any Holy Ghost. Then how is your baptized? It says in King James under what? Read it in the original. It says how? Under what means the same name. How was you baptized? They said, we've been baptized to John. The same man baptized Jesus. That's a good baptizing. Walked out in the water, the same one that baptized John. Paul said, that won't work anymore. <laughs> that ain't no good anymore. He's done come, been crucified. Go, John baptized unto repentance, not remission of sins. Amen. Saying you should believe on him has come Jesus Christ. And when they heard this, they walked out into the water and was rebaptized again in the name of Jesus Christ. Paul laid his hands on him. The Holy Ghost come on. They prophesied Amen. in spoken tongues. Right? Yes. Paul constrained man who had been baptized by the same man that baptized Jesus, told him they'd have to be baptized over because they wasn't baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. I've got a right to say the same thing. If it's the same doctrine. Now what did Paul say in Galatians 1 8? Now he done that. How many knows that's the truth? Say amen. 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 And he said, if an angel from heaven, let alone a preacher out of a church or a denomination, if an angel from heaven comes and preaches any other gospel than this. Let him be a curse. Amen. As I have said before, so say I again. Though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel than this that you have already heard. See where the canker worms eat you down? See? But if an angel preaches any other thing than what this is, let him be unto you a curse. Amen. That's right. Let him be cursed. Don't even pay attention to him. And if a pastor, if a missionary, if an evangelist or anybody tries to constrain you to be baptized any other way, but in the name of Jesus Christ, let me say with Paul, let him be a curse. Amen. If any man tells you shake hands with the preacher and you receive the Holy Ghost, let him be a curse. Amen. For the Holy Ghost is a birth. Amen. You want that self-styled? Anybody knows what I said before? A birth is a mess. I don't care where it's at. If a birth's in the barn, it's a mess. If it's in the house, it's a mess. If it's in the hospital in a pink decorated room, it's a mess. A birth is always a mess. And the new birth is nothing less. It's a mess. Crying and boo-hooing and crying and stammering lips and all kinds of going on. It's a mess, but it brings life. Amen. Only way that you can do it. 
God. Don't you take no shaking hands there. Put your aim on some church foot and say, I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator, Heaven and Earth, and Jesus Christ the Son, the Holy Roman Catholic Church, and the communion of saints. If you do, you're witnessing, you're a spiritualist. Anything that communes with the dead, I don't care what it is, is the devil. There's only one mediator between God and man. That's the man, Jesus Christ. Amen. And he is not dead, but he's alive. Amen. And he sure now he goes to the dead. All the other Catholic saints and Protestant saints and whatever more is dead and in the grave. They may be in glory. If they were saints, Amen. they are there. I don't care where they're at. If you commune with them, you're absolutely transgressing the laws of God and going through a devil. It's not a saint. Amen. Certainly. The Bible said so. The palm will eat that off too. But God will restore it back to a true living spirit of God that don't communicate with some... St. Jude and St. This and St. That and St. Cecilia and all these others and some of these saints. It'll be the Spirit of Jesus Christ that'll come back and manifest Himself and do the very same thing. I will restore, saith the Lord. Now thank God today, up on the church branch up here, there's a little life begins slipping up through the hair. It's manifesting itself. God will restore the full church back to its right statue again before the coming of the Lord. Lord Jesus, the service is yours. I'm only responsible for the Word and preach it. Now it's been done. It's in your hands, Lord. I pray that in Christ's name that you will receive these things and in the light that's been preached in, Lord. May if any conscience is hurt, may it be healed by the balm of Gilead. May those, Lord, sitting here that's been sprinkled, poured, or immersed in three gods, let them see their error, Lord. I can, no matter how much I preach, well, you preach and done the same thing, and yet their eyes were blind. No man can come to me except my Father draws him. And though you'd preached and done the miracles and proved that you was the Messiah, yet they could not believe because Isaiah said that they'd be that way. And I might add this, that today, though you have done so many things, you've brought your true word out, bring it back to the apostolic foundation, lay it down to a challenge that it's the truth. And then you come right back behind it and perform the same kind of the miracles that you did when you were here on earth. What happens? They can't because Paul said by the Spirit, like Isaiah said, they'd be heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, truce-breakers, false accusers, incontinent, and despisers of those that are right, having a form of godliness, but denying the power of God. From such turn away. Lord, I pray today that you'll manifest yourself and, and make, your, make your word live among us just now. While we ask it in Jesus' name. If you'll do it, Lord, all of them will believe. We're walking this tabernacle this morning, believing, and our soul is delivered. If you'll just believe, send it to them, Lord, and speak to every heart while we watch for your desire. Let the Holy Spirit, the true life of God, come into this little part of a branch that's left. Oh, Lord, energize it with your spirit. It's bearing record, Lord. Bearing record. Your word is right. Every man is a liar. You're true. No matter how many turns against, if it takes martyrdom, it takes excommunication, it takes having campaigns where you have to just take one man and stand up on those poor children of God. They'll come out anyhow, regardless. They'll come anyhow to hear it. My sheep know my voice. The stranger they not follow. Your voice the way it calls your sheep the first time, it calls again. If stranger they not follow. If your voice that calls your sheep said, Repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Your sheep heard it. Your sheep hears the same thing today. If one said, oh, that's, that's Antichrist stuff. Be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. A stranger, they'll not follow. Thank you, Jesus. You'll know your voice. Blessed now watch for your words. I pray, Father, that you'll grant all. Your voice is spoken. May your words follow. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Spirit moving. Now, I'm going to turn my back to this audience. Now, I don't want you people to share this tabernacle. I better look this way. I don't want any tabernacle people. I want you that's never been here before, or you know what I don't know, you out of town people. Raise your hands again where I can see where you're at. That you're sick. Let the Holy Spirit move now. Now, to you people, I don't know yet. Have you got prayer cards? Did they give out any prayer cards? They touched. And they didn't do it at least two times. The Bible said in the mouth of how many witnesses? Two or three, is that right? 
two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Take at least two or three of you. Then the rest of you believe whatever you have need of, you believe it right now. When you do it, if you'll do it, raise your hands and say, I'll, I'll, I'll take it by faith. Yeah. Just raise up my hand. When you do it, raise your hands. Everybody in here. How many in here that say, I've never seen it before? I'll take it by faith too. Raise your hand. Say, I'll take it by faith. Look here. Now you see where I stand? There's a challenge here. Now if he's God, he'll manifest himself. If this isn't truth, then I'm a liar, a false prophet. You should never come to hear me again because I'm a false prophet. I give a witness of Christ that isn't right. You can't do it to prove the teaching I've been given. You come to, you're from here at the tabernacle, aren't you, lady? You say, there's your hand up with a white hat on. Yeah, you're from here. See, when I see that, the, the people are pulling that vision. I can see standing right over them. But I'm wanting somebody that I don't know. Here. Are you from out the tabernacle here, lady? has got your handkerchief up like this. Sitting right here. Are you from are you you're a, you're from out of town? Stand up on your feet a minute. While you were sitting there praying, there was some odd feeling come over you. All of a sudden, that was the angel of the Lord. I standing right by you now. Now there's something that you've touched him. I don't know what it is. But you are from out of town. You could be from Louisville or Tennessee or wherever you might be. I don't know. God doesn't know that. But if he will reveal to me what you, the secret of your heart, make known your, your desire or something in there, would you believe it? accepting the word, doing everything just as you know? Now all you people are looking right at the woman, you see. Now let the Holy Spirit, if he's still the Holy Spirit, let him reveal it. Don't be afraid. He's God. He keeps his word everywhere. The woman's suffering with a breakdown, a nervous condition. That's right. Raise up your hand. You got heart trouble also. That's a nervous heart. Hurts you worse when you lay down. Smothers you more. You've had an operation. That operation isn't healed yet. That's right, isn't it? No, you're not from Ohio. You are from Ohio. You are from Ohio. You got a burden on your heart. It's some girl or something. It's a daughter missing. That's thus saith the Lord. Go receive what you ask for, lady. You touch something. Do you believe? Who else was that had their hands up in here? You believe God can reveal to me the secret of your heart? You believe it's the same God I've been preaching about this morning? You got a dark shadow of his cancer. You believe in God will heal you? You do? All right, sir. And you go back to Ohio, where you come from, Lebanon. Go back and be made well, leaving on the Lord Jesus Christ. Go please. This little lady sitting right here, kind of got some kind of skin ration. Stand up, honey. You believe? Kind of shocked you a little bit, didn't it? All right, it's, you're going to get over it. You're going to be all right. I'll see you later on. Go home be well. Who was that person who stood up just a few minutes ago? Some man back there stood up somewhere. You stand up, stand up to your feet. You believe Jesus Christ and tell me what your trouble is. You accept it. Leave that knot will go off your neck. Your wife's in there by you, suffering with a nervous condition. That's right, too. Y'all from Ohio. Put your hand over on her there. Lord, may they be healed. Go back to your home rejoice and you make well. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Come on, somebody next to you. Take my word. I'm telling you God's word. You believe it now? All that believe say amen. amen. The word has been made manifest. It's the truth. I bow your hands. Lord, I come to thee in the name of Jesus, praying for these people. It's late, Lord. And it's really later than we think. It's the coming of the Lord is at hand. We pray that your mercies will be extended. Give unto them, Lord, their healing. 
I now condemn the devil on the light of God's word that he is the Son of God, that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. That water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ is the correct application.